Everybody wants production-ready AI code, but the brutal truth is AI code breaks in production more often than not. And in this video, I'm going to solve that problem for you because I'm going to teach you how you can make your AI agent test its own code using test-driven development. This means that AI will first write the tests to actually know whether its implementation is correct or not, thereby being a self-testing AI agent. And to prove that this works, I'm going to be implementing this strategy on a code base that uses both Python as well as Java, so that no matter what programming language you use, you know how to use this strategy properly like a senior engineer. So let's get started. Welcome to our test application of today, an auction site that's implemented in both Python as well as Java. And this front end interacts with both of these backends at once. And these backends actually communicate over the same database. So for example, I can actually create a sample auction on the Python side here. And then let's go ahead and bid on this Raspberry Pi cluster kit with Python Pete. I'm going to bid $250 like so. And then you can indeed see that now I am the highest bidder. And if I switch to Java side of things, I can actually enter a bid here as well. I can, for example, say that I want to bid 270 bucks with Java Jane. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a bid. And you can actually see now that my bid must be at least $275 because this actually has a current price and then a minimum increment. So, okay, we'll go ahead and actually bid 275 bucks then. And there we go. We can even, for example, close the current auction and then go ahead and create a new sample auction in the Java side as well. Just to show you that these backends are interoperable, they both have the same endpoints. Now we are going to be implementing a new feature on this auctioning website, namely the ability to set the price at which an item can be immediately purchased. You see this a lot on platforms like eBay, right? Where you're able to just bid a specific amount and then the item is guaranteed to be yours. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to implement that in both of these backends using test-driven development. First, we have to explore the code base. So let's go ahead and jump right into Visual Studio Code. In here, you can actually see that we have a couple of folders. You can see here how we have a Java backend, a Python backend, and the simple web interface, which is just an HTML file. And to build this new feature, I actually have prepared a prompt. And this prompt will actually be included in the description down below. No need to worry about that for now. And this prompt actually describes how Claude Code should implement a new feature using test-driven development. So let's actually go ahead and check out what we're going to be building. We're going to be building a buy it now feature for the auctioning system. Now, the thing is, there's a lot of requirements here about adding an optional field, setting a certain buyout price, that must be higher than the starting price, etc. But the process of building this feature doesn't start with actually creating the code for the feature itself. No, actually, test-driven development is a form of development where you first write the tests for your feature, which will obviously fail because the code has not been implemented yet. And then from that point forward, your AI agent will implement the actual code. And the beautiful part is after it has implemented the code, it can run all of the tests again. And if they all pass, then you know that your code is actually genuinely functional. And of course, you can have a bit of a human in the loop element here as well, where you can, for example, first check the unit tests before you let the AI agent actually write the code to make sure that the tests already match your expectation. So in this case, what's actually going to happen is we're going to be implementing eight test cases. For example, creating an auction with a valid buyout price, but we also want to test some edge cases, right? That's how you're going to get production ready code. For example, we want to make sure that auctions can still be created without a buyout price to make sure that we have backwards compatibility with how the system worked before. So that's really how this prompt works on the high level. But in order to do test-driven development, you do actually need an existing test suite. In this case, if we open, for example, the Python backend folder, you will see how we actually have a test auction service Python file. And this file contains our current unit tests. Similarly, on the Java side of things, if we go into source, you can actually see we have a test folder here as well. And you can see how we actually have various tests, for example, for the auction service. And this is basically the test suite that Claude Code is going to be extending with test-driven development before it actually implements the new bidding feature. In any case, enough talking, let's get coding. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and open two new windows because I want to implement this feature on both the Java backend as well as the Python backend, but I'm not gonna make Claude Code do both backends at once. That's just asking for problems. I want Claude Code to be able to focus on one programming language at a time. 
All right, so I set up two terminal windows, one for the Python backend and then one for the Java backend. And all I'm going to do now is actually just start up two Claude code windows. And I'm going to say proceed for this one. I do trust my own backend, of course. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to paste this test driven development feature prompt because it already includes all of the directives that Claude code needs to get started on writing the actual test first. So we're going to paste the exact same prompt into both of these Claude code sessions. And in a way, we're actually going to be parallelizing this effort, right? Because we're going to have two agents working on both of the actual backends at the same time. Now, you can actually see here that it's going to be starting to implement this feature by using strict test-driven development methodology. And while it's coming up with the first tests, I just wanted to let you know that watching this video until the very end is very important because there's so much content out there nowadays that tries to make you believe that AI coding will want 100 extra productivity and that AI code can just one shot the most complex applications out there. But this is not true. AI coding has been a great productivity booster for me as an actual senior engineer, but it has its limits. But by using real software methodologies like test driven development, you can actually write production ready AI code. You just have to follow tutorials like this one and really understand how to write proper AI code first. There are a lot of distracting methodologies out there that people try to teach you, like the BMAT method. And I'm not saying that these B methods are bad, it's just that it doesn't compensate for a lack of skills. If you, for example, don't know how to code, then you are going to get stuck with AI coding no matter what method you're using, because it's going to make a mistake now and then, and then if you don't know any Python or Java, then how are you going to fix this application? That's right, you will not be able to, and that's where you get stuck. So actually understanding how to code properly is super important and that's what you're learning today because test driven development has been a tested framework that has been used in software development for many years now. Okay, enough theoretical talk. Let's actually see what Claude code is up to right now. And you can actually see that it's understood the code base structure. And of course it's explored different files for the Java side of things compared to the Python files. The Python files are a lot flatter. There's a lot more included in one single file, whereas the Java files are a little bit more split apart. It's an interesting difference between writing Java and Python code, right? And now you can see that the first failing test has been written. I'm gonna give this terminal a little bit more room so you can see what's going on. I'm gonna go ahead and allow it to make these edits. And then if we check out our Git work tree, you can see that finally we have our first test here. This is a new test that will actually fail because if you look here, you can actually see that set buyout price is not even a valid method because it's not been implemented yet. That's a good thing. That's how we are actually approaching this test driven development properly. So now what you can see is that Claude Code is going to run all tests to confirm that these new tests do fail. So here you go, it's written a bunch of new failing tests and now it's actually gonna go ahead and run all of the tests. So and I think I can actually show you if I do control R here that a lot of these tests are failing. That's exactly what we want. So we can go ahead and toggle back and you can indeed see that in this case, that's a great thing. Cloud code is aware that it's supposed to be failing. And now it's actually going to be implementing the minimum code to make the tests pass. And this is a super important element as well. A lot of the times AI code is super verbose and will write way more code than it needs to. In this case, Cloud code will write the minimum amount of code that it needs to in order to make the tests pass. And now on the left side here, you can see that it's starting to actually finish up those tests on the Python file as well. So that's great. I'm gonna go ahead and approve all of that there too. And you can see here how the approach is the exact same. It doesn't matter whether you're using a strict language like Java or a more loosely typed language like Python. You can use this method regardless of the programming language. And indeed here, you can see that the Python tests are failing as well, which is actually expected. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give Claude code the time that it needs to actually write the implementation code. And then we'll have a look at whether the test will pass. So on the bottom right, you can see after a while Claude code has finished the implementation and now when running all of the tests, you can see that all the tests are actually passing, which is perfect. And now you can actually see here on the left in our change log that we actually have modifications in the actual root application. So for example, we now have a new big decimal buyout price. And then if we go into the auction service, you can actually see that if the buyout price is included, we do a couple of validations, which all have to do with making sure that these tests that it was creating earlier can actually pass. For example, there are tests here like fail when buyout price is less than or equal to starting price, which is a great test case, right? Because we want to make sure that the buyout price has to be more than the starting price. It doesn't make sense for the auction system otherwise. So you can see here how it actually works very well. 
Now let's go ahead and see how far ahead it is with the Python implementation. And you can see that it's running all of the tests, but there are some issues here. It seems like decimal places is not valid for Pydantic's decimal field. Now it's interesting that it actually one shot all the Java unit tests, but it's having some trouble with Python. And that has to do with the fact that Java is a much more strictly typed language, which is also something that is really beneficial for an AI coding mechanism. Because if you look here on the bottom right, you can actually compile the code as well with a language like Java which gives you a lot of guarantees on the, I guess, baseline quality of the code. Just because code is compiling doesn't mean that the code is perfect, but it's definitely a step forward and you know that the code is at least meeting some kind of minimum requirement there, right? So of course, if we try and run clean compile, it will actually work because Claude Code was able to one-shot the Java implementation here. Whereas here, on the Python side of things, finally, it did actually manage to implement the test suite correctly. But it's actually a relatively simple feature, and you can see here already how the behavior drifts between these two different programming languages. And that's not a great learning point for you from this video. You should pick the language that you're the most comfortable with, but it can be beneficial to learn a more strict typed language like Java or C Sharp. You can also implement types in a programming language like Python, but it's still not really the same as as a language that can compile in a real way like a Java application. Anyway, I digress. We now have code that runs on the back end of both the Java application and the Python one, which is great, but I'm sure that you want to see some proof of this, some actual proof in the web application instead of it just being in the backends. So let's go ahead and implement a change in our HTML page so that we can actually interact with this new feature. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go to my files here, and then I'm going to go ahead and drag in index.html, and I'm going to do that inside of the Java chat session that I have because the Java implementation is strictly typed. So I trust this a little bit more compared to the Python implementation since I have the luxury to choose anyway. And I'm going to say the following. This is our web page to interact with the backend. In fact, we interact with both a Java and Python backend with the same implementation. Given your latest Java edition, rework the HTML slash JavaScript to include the ability to handle the buyout price. The sample auctions that the front end calls should include a buyout price. And this price should, of course, be displayed in the front end. Here we go. This is what I want to do now. I wanted to rework that HTML file. So while Cloud Code is working on this implementation, I just wanted to let you know that these kinds of real AI coding strategies is what I focus on in my AI native engineer community. And in this community, you can learn how to accelerate yourself with AI, regardless of whether you're working on your career or a business. So you can check out the community in the link in the description below. Otherwise, I'll see you in just a second and we'll check out how this has been implemented in our front end. So it seems like it's done with the front-end implementation. It wants to test the front-end itself, but I'm just gonna go ahead and exit out of the session because we're gonna do that manually, right? So in our application, I can now go ahead and create a new sample auction. And then you will see that we actually have a buyout price set of $150. So I can actually just create an initial bid of 55 bucks, which will work just fine. And then now I can actually create a buyout price bid of 155 bucks. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a bid here. And then actually something seems to go wrong. So what seems to happen here is that I place a bid and the auction is closed off. But the thing is, my front end doesn't really know that that is a possibility. My front end continuously tries to fetch the latest auction and it doesn't really have a way of knowing that the auction was actually closed off because our front end doesn't actually have any logic for when a buyout price is reached. And this actually shows you why test-driven development is so important. We did not do test-driven development for our front end. So our front end does sort of work now, but it's already running into issues. And that is the reality of AI coding without a proper framework like test-driven development. So what I have to do now is now I have to go back into Claude and actually just communicate that this issue exists. And then let's see if we can fix it. So I can, for example, say here, the front end does not know how to deal with a bid that's placed that actually buys out the item because the front end continuously refreshes the auction I actually get an ID error. 
And you can see here that now I have to go back to Claude and try to fix the error. If I had actually done test driven development for my front end from the very beginning, I probably could have one shot that implementation as well. This shows you the reality of AI coding. Other content would probably not show you this and just act like everything is working. But this is the truth that you see here on this channel. You have to use the right coding methodology to actually get success out of AI coding. Looks like we're done. Let's go back into our front end, give it a full refresh just to make sure. We're going to go ahead and create a new sample auction. And then I'm just going to go ahead and buy that out straight away with 500 bucks. Going to go ahead and place a bid. And there you go. Now we can actually see that the front end is able to deal with the new buying out logic. And this just shows you how powerful using the right methodologies can be for AI coding. So I hope that from this video, you've learned that using the right methodology to do AI coding can give you so many amazing real results. If you want to escape the trap of vibe coding and actually get productive with AI as an engineer, you should definitely check out my AI native engineering community in the link in the description below. And I hope to see you there.